So improv. Improv really is role playing. Um, how many of you in the audience are professionals? And by that I mean you actually consider yourself a professional writer, a professional actor. A, a, oh, 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 good. Come on now, it's Hollywood. You're all like, oh, okay, I am. <laughs> okay, good, good. For, for you guys, improv is an invaluable tool. For the writer, improv means that you can sit there and you can come up with your entire story, your entire arc, each character, and you can basically perform it. When, when I first started dating my wife and, and I was up late night writing, I actually would get up and we had a really small studio apartment off of Los Feliz. So I'd be like in the corner, which was the kitchen slash bedroom nook, and, and I'd start writing these sketches like, you can't do that, I'm gonna tell you something. And she'd watch me and she thought I was like this crazy homeless man um, until I told her what I was doing. So it's an invaluable, it's a really, really incre incredible tool. And for the person that is not the serious actor or writer, you just wanna have fun, that's great too. Because improv is also about freeing yourself up so that you can get up in front of your organization, in front of your, uh, your coworkers or your boss and, active and, and actually speak and not be afraid. So, so it's role playing, think, think of it that way, it's really easy, you know kids, when you're five, six, and you guys are taking boxes and making a tank out of it, and you're cowboys and Indians, and you shot me, no you didn't, I'm still alive, and he runs. The kids are the best improvisationists ever, because kids innately know the rules to improv. And I'm gonna give you those rules right now, because I have a second page, because <laughs> I'm a professional. Uh, kids, kids know these these rules, and, and it's amazing because as we get older, we lose these things. Like, like for instance, the first thing I have here is listening. That's going to be paramount all evening. When I get a couple of volunteers up on stage, I'll give demonstrations of a few different games. Listening, listening, listening. The stuff that we do on Who's Line is by far the fastest improv that I've ever done. If you, and I just mean that because you're playing with the big boys. Between Ryan Collin and Greg Proofs, they are masters, and, and, and you have to to come ready to play. So if you're not listening, if you're in your own head, if you have your own agenda, you're done. It moves that fast. Let's say that a game is called, and then they say, okay, the scene takes place on a ship. I'm over to the side of the stage going, okay, ship, that's great, I can be the captain, or I can do this, all right, that's great. I've already jumped into the scene, the, the scene has moved on. And I'm the idiot said, hey, I'm the captain. And then they look at me and Ryan kicks me off stage and that would be no fun. So you have to actively listen at all times, even if you're not in the scene, even if you think you have this great thing, you have to get out of that habit. You have to be in the moment. And I hate to say that because it is such a cliche actor directory thing, be in the moment, but it's true. Because in a script, you can fake your way through. I know that in two pages, I've got this scene, so I'll make, make some business over here. Okay, great, I'm totally thinking about something else, but I hear my cue, great, now I'm gonna act. You have no chance to do that in an improvisational scene because that, that scene, they don't know where they're going, the, the two people involved in the scene. So if you're the third person coming in, you have to be alert because there is no roadmap for you. So you always have to listen. I'm gonna come back to that time and time again during the course of the evening. What's the most important thing? Exactly. And listening, I always don't even mean, you know, listening with your ears. I also mean listening so well that you're aware of the people on stage. You know, it's basic stagecraft. Really being aware of, of where the people that you're dealing with are. Being aware that someone may be making a physical offer. That, that, that instead of talking, which, which is an instinct, you know, that we as actors have to overcome even in scripted material because you just want to talk. And as soon as you're improvising, oh, I've got to put out so much information that, oh, you have to know everything about me. I'm this, I'm a gunslinger, and I have these guns, and I got these, blah, 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 blah. You know what? Shut up. Just shut up and take your time. But no, uh, uh, Jonathan, stand up for me. That if the two, the two of us started, a good exercise to practice your, your awareness is basically to just start off scenes and be completely silent. And the audience ought to be able to get everything they need to know within the first minute, minute and a half. So, so Jonathan would just start doing something. So immediately, you know, I think, you know, he's hungry or just 
playing doofy or whatever. <laughs> um, so, so he's hungry, so I'll make an offer right now to uh, to uh, I'll just. say a word to each other and and even when I turned my head I had a feeling that he was doing whatever he had to do we we were setting each other up and uh, so that just goes back to listening and being very very aware these are the tenets of improv 